What is your name? Marcus Zachariah. Date of birth? I would rather say the age. 34. Region of birth? Egypt, Middle East. Have you directly immigrated from Egypt to Canada? No, I stopped by the U.S. I lived in the U.S. for some time. When did you immigrate away from Egypt? 2011. May I ask why did you immigrate? Would say, so it's like an economical and, and professional immigration. Uh, some folks are pushed out of their own countries and stuff like that. I am not one of them. I chose to relocate to the U.S. Why did you end up coming to Canada? Again, it's for professional reasons. My family had an opportunity in Canada, so we moved to Canada. I am aware you are in Ottawa. Yes. Yeah, so we moved to Ottawa right, like from the U.S. How, what was your impression of the city? Uh, the first impression, I love the fact that it was a, a capital. I lived in a capital. I, I, used, like, I grew up in Cairo. And when I moved to the U.S., uh, I lived uh, for, for a bit like the area around Washington, D.C. And then Ottawa is another capital. So I think it was like it sounded interesting to me like or at just another capital. Yeah, I love the, the culture of capitals. Not necessarily of how big they are, but how diverse they are. And, and actually, this is one of the main reasons for relocation in general, other than the economical and professional move to the U.S. or Canada, is eagerness to live in a more diverse or more multicultural uh, society. How long did you live in America and then decide to move to Canada? So I moved to Canada in 2014. So it was almost uh, three years and uh, in the U.S. And then, yeah, and I lived in Canada since 2014. You're, how did you find yourself settling and adapting in a new city? Hmm. I think I was privileged enough to have a job. So the settlement, like, since I work with newcomers and immigrants and uh, the, the, settle, the settlement part it has many dimensions, I was financially stable. The, the other part for me of settling is how diverse and how accepting new city is or this city, the current city, Ottawa, for racialized folk, folks like me. And the city was welcoming in this regards before I found a job and after I landed the job. So yeah, I'm gonna, I am in an environment that is very welcoming and um, I work with newcomers and immigrants. So most folks work in this area are, a uh, big number of them are racialized themselves. So yeah, all in all a positive experience other than the interaction with police were all negative, so yeah. And have you faced any, any struggles or ch challenges when you were settling in, in Ottawa? Of course, again, the, the systemic racism, again, in the immigration process it was also Harper government when I moved to, the U, to, to Canada. So uh, the racist Harper government and the anti-immigrant as well were required family. So I, I moved to Canada on a family sponsorship uh, program, which is a very like elite and privileged immigration program. And the anti-immigrant Harper government required even elite or privileged immigrants like me to stay out of, the, out of a job for 28 months in the country until they receive a work permit. This has happened almost for about 20 months of the 28 months. And then when the liberal government came, Trudeau's government, I got my work permit in two months from their swearing in. I work with refugees and asylum seekers and folks who are really having a lot more issues with their uh, immigration files. But, but as a privileged immigrant, I have a professional degree, but the system was anti-immigrants at that time and racist. So yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the racism still exists, but not necessarily anti-immigrants. Do you still maintain connections with Egypt? 
Yeah, of course. You have family there? Yes. Were there any associations or institutions that helped you settle in your new cities? I actually explored them or I discovered them after I started working in the field, helping newcomers and immigrants. Maybe one of them, like I used one program, which is called Career Connections for International Health Care uh, Professionals. Career Connection International Healthcare Professionals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and who are they? raise my voice too. They are based in Ottawa. Oh, based in Ottawa. What do, yeah. what do they do? How would um, they help? In almost every Canadian metropolis, there are settlement programs and professional career programs for immigrants. Mm. And this is one of them. So if it is designed for internationally trained healthcare professionals, so they would understand that these folks maybe need to go through their licensing in Canada or uh, credits in Canada or something uh, like this. So they coach you in this department. And also if you would rather choose a different career path, they would also coach you in this department. It's almost a career coach and cultural transition and bridging. It's very so important one actually goes out there and experiences Canada. Yeah. Of course, and especially I think us Egyptians, I I see that we have issues. I rarely see a person who is from an Egyptian background is using these community services that are available and we are paying taxes for, like big part of our taxes and our immigration application. A big part of the money of these applications goes to funding the program that I'm working in at the moment, mm -hmm. helping and supporting newcomers and immigrants in the healthcare system. I always tell folks, like, go out and explore. And I try to help them with resources as well in their local communities. And all these resources are very much available throughout North America, but they are underutilized by Egyptians. Do you keep anything for, of your home country? I think I'm more... Uh, less materialistic as much as of the unmaterialized things like like the music the Last music year, attached yeah. yes i am attached to music for the motherland very much but also i try to get inspired by the t-shirts that i'm wearing stuff like that stuff that has connection with egypt or arabic so yeah the language also any customs or mannerisms foods oh yeah Food as well. I eat and I cook uh, Egyptian stuff, especially uh, also the weir the weirdest things. I am waiting to like get the bus terma ready and home. Storma. Uh, uh, no, what's oh bus terma? Yeah, it's beef and bus terma beef. Bus terma beef. Yeah. And Victoria, come on, beef. Is it like yes, bus terma beef? And it's, yeah, so it's basically a, not like an Egyptian form of cured meat. It's something like the, the charcuterie stuff that are Italians are doing, like prosciutto and stuff like that, but Egyptian uh -huh. or Armenian uh, style. So, yeah, I make fisikh at home. Stuff like what that. is it? Yeah. Fisikh, fermented, fermented fish. fish. I've heard of this one. It's fermented in salt? Yes, fermented in salt. An acquired taste. So yeah, so no, it's uh, it's definitely and a big big scene of them, and I involve the kids as well in the making of these processes and stuff like that. Yeah. How is your life now compared to when you first arrived? Hmm. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to be a lot more settled, have more roots, more connections with folks here in Ottawa and all over Canada and the U.S. Because of how settled I am, I can help other folks. What does Egypt mean to you now and have your feelings changed over time? I think Egypt is a very unique place. It's, and for me, it's not just about the physicality and the geographic location of Egypt as much as the spirit of that geographical location. Meaning, I think 
we as Egyptians are very privileged to be connected with all these, to be in that center of the world and to have all these connections with Middle East, like or, or have these identities as Middle Easterns, Mediterraneans, North Africans, and Africans, Arabs, all these connections. So this is what Egypt is for me. It gives me this or the opportunity to have this diverse background and building bridges with other communities that are around me in Canada. Yeah, this is Egypt for me, honestly. Like this, yeah, it gives me, because, and, and when I say Egypt, I can connect, or I'm Egyptian, or I have Egyptian background, I'm connected with so many folks around me. Even white folks who are from, a Mediterranean background, Italians, Greek, folks like this. Can you tell me more about what you mean by building bridges? One of the things that I was lacking in Egypt, and I think the culture is lacking for many reasons, having people that are different than you. And also sometimes we are condemned to build bridges with others, or we yeah. are afraid. I think just because we're not used to diversity in general. Um, and not used to diversity back in Egypt, like back, yes, back in as Egypt. as Egyptians. And even many Egyptians carry this baggage with them. But, but I see many Egyptians here, they, yes, uh, they say hi and bye to many people and they are familiar, like they are warm and everything and, uh, but they don't have real deep connections with many folks that they can and they have an opportunity by just the fact that being Egyptians to build bridges and deeper connections right. with these folks. Whatever the deeper connections are, like faith-based, non-faith-based, ethnically based, geographically based. So that's, that's, why, that's why I love the term building bridges. Would you ever go back or immigrate again? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I love, again, and this main reason I'm, is like living in, I thrive in very pluralistic society. Even I can't go and live in rural areas in Canada or the US. Like I can't live there. 